morning and welcome everyone. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of Bishop Morin, uh, welcome to our special guest who will be introduced in just a few moments. Also to Archbishop Brody, to Bishop House, to members of the press, to clergy, to the religious and lay faithful of the Diocese of Luxe, and to the staff of the Diocesan Center. I'm Monsignor Dominic Fulham. I'm the moderator of the Curia for the Diocese of Luxe, which essentially means that I am the chief of staff, something like that anyway. As you probably know, bishops in the Catholic Church are asked to submit a letter of resignation when they turn 75 years of age. And as of 5 a.m. today, noontime in Rome, Pope Francis accepted the resignation of Bishop Roger Warren, the third bishop of Biloxi, by naming his successor. The Diocese of Biloxi is now between bishops, or what is known as sede vacante. But until our new bishop is ordained and installed, Bishop Warren will act as apostolic administrator. I would now like to welcome Bishop Roger Warren to come forward and give you more complete details about his successor and the plan going forward. Bishop Warren. Thank you, Monsignor, and again, a warm welcome to all of you this morning. And, uh, you know, everybody asks me why am I smiling so broadly. <laughs> as Monsignor Dominic just mentioned, uh, as a matter of church policy on the occasion of my 75th birthday, which was back in March, I submitted uh, my letter of resignation to the Holy Father, and it was uh, accepted with a proviso that I would continue to serve <laughs> until the appointment of a new bishop for uh, Biloxi. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, has chosen my successor, who will be the fourth bishop of the Biloxi Diocese. We are blessed this morning in a particular way to uh, have in our midst uh, the founding bishop of Biloxi, Bishop Joseph Lawson House. <laughs> Bishop of Biloxi, now the Archbishop of uh, Mobile, Thomas J. Rohde. <laughs> Myself, the outgoing number three. <laughs> and of course, our most honored guest on this day, and uh, I'm about to announce and introduce uh, the fourth Bishop of the Diocese of Biloxi. Our Holy Father has uh, chosen the Monsignor Louis Kinneman, who is currently serving as the Vicar General of the Diocese of Corpus Christi, Texas, and he will be the new bishop of this local church. Uh, Bishop-elect Louis Kinneman is a seasoned pastor who has served as a priest in the Corpus Christi Diocese for almost 40 years as well as serving in numerous administrative posts up to and including uh, his current position as Vicar General and Moderator of the Curia. In a moment, I'm gonna call upon the Bishop-elect to take the podium, not take it too far, but come to it, <laughs> uh, to tell us more about uh, himself and uh, to express his personal sentiments, which I know are those of great joy and happiness at the experience of becoming the fourth Bishop of Biloxi. Uh, first, I would like to invite Archbishop Rohde to express his greetings and welcome to the new Bishop. I remember a little over 15 years ago sitting at this very table uh, being announced as the second Bishop I am so much more relaxed today than I was on that day. <laughs> Bishop Howes, uh, you made me feel welcome that day, and, and it's good to be here with you, and of course you, uh, Bishop Morin, and to welcome uh, Bishop-elect Kinneman here. Uh, as you can see, uh, Bishop-elect, uh, you're the fourth bishop. None of us have died yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go ruining a good thing. Um, <laughs> We have received a, an early and a happy and a most welcome Christmas present. And uh, 
in receiving from Pope Francis, our new bishop-elect, uh, both a blessing for the Diocese of Luxe and for the province of, of Mobile. As Bishop Warren says, he comes with a, a, a wealth of experience, extensively involved in parish ministries, diocesan ministries, seminarian work, education, and all that will serve him well as he shepherds this diocese. Um, so we have a present, Christmas present, and what will soon be announced is the date of his installation and ordination as a bishop, which is also his birthday. No. So you are his birthday present. <laughs> so there are many presents. And so it is with great joy, Bishop Elect Kimmon, that we welcome you to the province of Mobile. We are glad that you are here. God bless you. expected to have this kind of a day, um, but I'm um, both uh, excited to be with you and look forward to working with you. Uh, I would like to um, thank uh, Bishop Morin for his uh, hospitality in a very special way, and it's wonderful to have uh, uh, Bishop House with us. Uh, great to have you, and, and to have all the bishops, or the bishops-to-be, <laughs> and, and of course, Archbishop Rohde, thank you for being here in a very special way. Appreciate you uh, very much. Um, I, I am a son of the Gulf Coast, I'll say it. Uh, my uh, uh, father was in the oil business. He worked for Mobile Oil Corporation. Uh, we moved uh, many, many times when I was uh, younger uh, from uh, Pensacola, Florida, uh, all the way through here and into uh, Texas. Um, I actually spent a number of uh, summers here as a boy, so I have very, very fond memories uh, of, of being here. Um, of course, everything has changed since then. That was 1960, 61, 62. Um, and uh, really, my journey of faith was with my family in a very special way. Um, my mother taught me how to pray. Uh, my father taught me how a lot about life, but life within how to live church, how to live faith, how to be a person of faith. And, um, and he also taught me about business, uh, which has come in very handy as vicar general. And I know Father Dominic can say definitely, I'm going to see you Dominic can say definitely that's true. Um, we moved to Corpus Christi in 1963, and I entered actually the, the Corpus Christi Minor Seminary uh, in 1966, uh, and continued uh, in the seminary. Um, people have asked me, you know, well, when did you know you wanted to be a priest? And I said about five minutes before I walked up to be ordained a priest, <laughs> I really when I wanted to be a priest. Um, but you know, it's, and, and I think all the priests can probably say the same thing, it's, it's a journey of faith, and as you go through each year of seminary, it's a decision to be with the Lord in that way, and to serve his people uh, in that way. Um, 
I knew there were a lot of other things I could do as a person, but uh, I always had a tugging to be uh, serve the altar of God and to serve the people of God um, in a way that spoke eternity, is the best way to say it. And uh, so college seminary there, or, or part of college seminary there, um, went to a uh, University of St. Thomas Houston uh, and St. Mary's Seminary, finished seminary studies there, uh, was ordained uh, a transitional deacon, uh, actually at the Mary Joseph Home for the Elderly in New Orleans. And Bishop Drury was kind enough to do that. And that was because my grandmother, my father's mother, was there. And she is the one that prayed me through the seminary <laughs> and enabled me to be able to be ordained. Um, there's a, there is a funny story, and I hope it's funny for you too, but my grandmother um, had a, a wonderful sense of humor, as did my father, and you'll learn my sense of humor too over time. But uh, um, time went on, and year after year, she was praying for me, year after year. Of course, we came to that point where she was in the nursing home, and I would go and visit her from time to time uh, in New Orleans. And uh, this is about 10 or 11 years down the trail. And she finally, you know, as I'm visiting her, she finally grabs my arm, pulls me close to her, and whispers to me, she says, grandson, are you slow? <laughs> and I said, no, Grandma, it just takes a while to get her there. But I promised to be back and celebrate Mass for you, which I was able to do. Uh, and uh, that was a wonderful gift. Ordained a priest, 1977, uh, November 18th, at the Corpus Christi Cathedral. And um, as Bishop Board has said, I've had a lot of different assignments. Um, both in the diocese, but especially uh, in the parishes. Uh, and I've been a pastor for many, many years. Um, that's where my heart is with the parishes. That's where my heart is with the people. Uh, and that's where my heart is with you, too. To, to be with you, to walk with you, hand in hand, that we can grow in the love of Jesus Christ and share his word in a very special way and bring the folks of the the Luxie Diocese to Christ. Um, so it's with great joy that I, I uh, come to you. I actually feel like I'm coming home, having been here as a, as a boy uh, many, many years ago. Um, so uh, I think I'm supposed to shut up at this moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Once the announcement has been made public uh, of the appointment of a, of a bishop and then becomes the bishop-elect, and as uh, in our telephone conversations, uh, Monsignor Kenneman was telling me, you know, of course he doesn't have any of the, um, you call the Episcopal regalia, you know, uh, the, the vesture, let's say, that will be expected of him in his office, you know, mitre, crozier, investments. but. From the point of uh, the uh, announcement, as the bishop-elect, the bishop-elect uh, during liturgical ceremonies until the time of his ordination and installation is able to, uh, to wear the zucchetto, which marks him as having been chosen for that office of the bishop. So I have the uh, privilege uh, this morning, Monsignor, Kind of like crowning him. <laughs> I was telling him in one of our conversations that uh, he said he's not accustomed to wearing a hat, nor was I. And I said, I haven't really mastered the two hat system, you know, that the bishops have, the zucchetto and then the mitre and during liturgical ceremonies taking off and putting on and 
So I said, it's something that he's going to have to uh, work at. <laughs> but uh, I am pleased to make that personal gift uh, to the bishop-elect. And speaking of Episcopal vesture, I'm pleased uh, that we're able to announce that we have a confirmation for the date of uh, the ordination of the new bishop and his installation at the cathedral, the uh, Apostolic Nuncio in Washington, uh, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, has confirmed that he will come to Biloxi and be with us, uh, along with Archbishop Brody and I'm sure many other archbishops and bishops, on Friday, February 17th at the Cathedral Church of the Nativity of Our Lady, Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We will have the ordination of the new bishop and uh, his uh, installation, which, you know, the, the <coughs> nuncio comes as the personal representative of the Pope and comes bearing the official documents, the papal uh, decree, we could say, naming the the particular man to the bishop of the place, and then uh, together with the archbishop escorting him to the bishop's chair in the cathedral of the cathedra. So that uh, that is already scheduled now for Friday, February 17th, most likely around two o'clock in the afternoon um, at the cathedral. Uh, in the meanwhile, and we have uh, had conversations, uh, the bishop-elect and I uh, have agreed, you know, we will work uh, Closely, and he has asked me to uh, be of as much assistance as possible, and that's a delight uh, uh, for me. And uh, so uh, I can tell you already that he is a very kind, gentle, warm, outgoing person. And we've had phone conversations over the past uh, 10 days, but it's the nature of these pontifical secrets that you can't reveal uh, as you draw closer to the time of an appointment. And then since his arrival yesterday, we have spent more time together. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to working uh, with the new bishop. But in the meanwhile, I have received the uh, decree of appointment from the congregation for bishops, uh, naming me as the apostolic administrator of the Diocese of Biloxi up until the day of the ordination and installation of the new bishop. And uh, so um, anybody who thinks they're going to get away with anything in the, next, <laughs> in the next 60 days, sorry to tell you, the warm, kind, gentle, outgoing man is coming in February. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> and uh, folks have asked me, and I do plan to continue to uh, uh, live in Biloxi, and uh, the bishop, uh, the new bishop, has graciously uh, accorded to me uh, permission to continue to live in uh, the house uh, where I came to, I moved into, and Bishop Brody had been there before me, and so that uh, he has graciously uh, uh, invited me to continue in residence there and to continue to uh, assist uh, in the administration of the diocese. And there's a little office, uh, I think uh, Bishop Howes designed a little office next to the bishop's office, which was where the Bishop Emeritus uh, would work. And so I will be able to, uh, as much as the bishop would like, assist him uh, in the transition and uh, in whatever way he chooses after uh, his ordination and installation. And so I am, and I am very happy about being retired. Not because I don't want to do anything. <laughs> because I, I, you know, when I start asking myself, what am I going to do? And uh, I think the difference is it's kind of like freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Free to do. <laughs> and, uh, but it is going to be a delight to, to work alongside of such a pleasant and congenial um, chief shepherd for the, you know, for the people of the diocese. And uh, I know he told me that he does and won't leave this room without being asked some questions. <laughs> he is uh, ready to answer any and all questions, uh, uh, fathers and deacons, not from you. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, uh, from the media. And so, Monsignor. Yeah, oh, there you are. <laughs> it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, I do also want to thank uh, the people of the Diocese of Corpus Christi. 
Uh, and of course, Bishop Michael Mulvey, whom I've worked with very closely over the last six and a half years. And of course, my parish of St. Philip's, uh, the Apostle in Corpus Christi, uh, and I'll have masses with them this weekend, and we'll kind of do all the announcing and things again with them this weekend. But uh, much love to them, and um, pray for you, pray for me, uh, and that we can all continue to grow in, in Christ, as the, the Holy Father has planted me now in the Luxe with you. So we will open the floor if you have any questions. Monsignor, what, what do you see as your biggest challenge as you assume this new leadership role here in Biloxi? You know, part of, part of what I'd like to do is to get to know everybody and to really listen to folks and um, kind of discern, you know, who we are as a church and where we need to head as a church. There's been some wonderful work done by all these bishops that are here, and I'd like to build on that together. So thank you for the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, Holy Father uses Twitter a lot, uses social media. Do you plan on using social media and Twitter as part of your ministry when you're here in Biloxi? Uh, I'd like to. I, I haven't done that much uh, as Vicar General uh, because usually we want the bishop to be up there, but now I'm up there. So <laughs> I'd like to. I'd very much like to. Yeah. I don't think my Twitter account will approach the number of people on his Twitter account at this point. So thank you for the question. Can I back up for individual questions? Sure, okay. we can do that. At this time, we're going to end the press conference, but the members of the media, if you would like to interview Bishop Alec Kinneman and Bishop Morin, please feel free. We will to, shut that up. Also to the, to the priests and deacons and religious and, of course, our, our lay people, I really do mean it. I do want to work with you, and I'm, I'm Brother Priest, I'm with you in a very special way. Uh, walk hand in hand. I look forward to getting to know each of you very personally. Uh, and of course, the deacons, the sisters, uh, and, and all the religious of the diocese. Uh, it'll take me a while, so uh, be patient, if you will, please. But we, I think we can grow together uh, in the love of Christ uh, together. And again, I appreciate uh, Bishop Morin for uh, his assistance and counsel, and the Bishop Brody, Archbishop Brody, thank you so much for being here, and the Bishop House. We continue to pray for you, too. God bless you. Uh, before, we, before we go, why don't we, uh, why don't I give you a blessing? How about that? <laughs> and then, then we'll break down to the, you know, the individual questions. So, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's go for it. <laughs>